This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. If you've gone through the necessary background checks, you've gone through the necessary chaining, you've fingerprinted, you've done the background checks, you've obtained a license in the state of Florida, you should be permitted to carry in defense of yourself and others. Would they make us safer? That's the question tonight. State Senator Greg Stubbe is filing, filing legislation to allow people with concealed carry permits to bring weapons into airports in the wake of the mass shooting at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. Some are questioning whether more guns is really the answer to preventing another tragedy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on allowing guns in airports coming up. But first, our top seven stories at seven. And we begin in Bradenton, where two former longtime employees of the police department are under arrest tonight. The married couple is accused of stealing from the department. Jake and Cindy Zagman were civilian employees who worked for the department since 1983. He retired in 2015. She retired last year, two weeks after an investigation was launched against them. Now, after 11 months, the couple is accused of stealing $30,000. The chief says since they worked together, it was tough to uncover. They accomplished this through collusion. This was a married couple. They had grown within the organization. They'd started off um, just as specialists and had ascended to positions of authority. These are the people who took in the money and conversely did the audits. We were victims. The Bradenton Police Department was a victim in this case. The couple was released on a bond of $7,500. No court date has been set. We are just learning about an incredible rescue of an elderly woman from a burning house thanks to three deputies from the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. The deputies, James Crosby, Lindsay Fisher, and Michael Bueller, got the 83-year-old woman to safety. They were called to her house on 24th Street Friday night. The deputies were able to break a bathroom window to get inside. They cleared an exit. The woman was brought to safety and given CPR. The victim and Deputy Crosby were both taken to the hospital as a precaution for smoke inhalation. All three will be formally honored for their actions. Today is the official start of Black History Month, and Sarasota is celebrating it with two major exhibits. The North Sarasota Library is showing an exhibit on Congressman Robert Smalls, the former slave, played a major role in ending the Civil War, along with spending five terms in Congress. African American trailblazers are being showcased. Sarasota City Hall with a display of features of phot phot photographers and pho photographs, newspaper clippings, and black Sarato Sarasotans who made the community what it is. They are all give the same message, a, a yes you can type of message, that you can do it. And here's an example of how it was done many years ago. Both exhibits will be there through the end of the month. Now to Lakewood Ranch, where owners of an exclusive golf club want to build a private helicopter landing pad on their property. Neighbors are not too pleased. It would be built on the concession golf club near the Panther Ridge community on Lynbrook Lane. Residents in Panther Ridge are hiring an attorney to fight the proposal. They say helicopters flying over their homes would not only hurt property values, but could spook horses and create a safety hazard. Concession Golf Club refused to comment. The proposal goes before the Manatee County Commission tomorrow at 9 a.m. Lakewood Ranch is also facing another problem, and this one has big teeth. Alligators, they are common in neighborhood ponds, but some have become just a little too aggressive. The Lakewood Ranch Interdistrict Authority removed 22 gators this past year. While some were re relocated, many had to be euthanized. Even though he's a reptile, I, I don't wish them to die. However, uh, I, they can be aggressive. I know that they, they can run very quickly and attack and, and attack little animals such as my little dog. A special meeting on alligators will be held at Lakewood Ranch Town Hall later this month. The threat of Zika may have subsided for the time being, but, time being, but researchers here in Florida are continuing to develop a vaccine and will now have some extra help. Governor Rick Scott is awarding 34 grants to universities and research centers. In total, he is authorizing $25 million for Zika research. Scientists will study the long-term impact of the virus on adults and children, as well as developing cost-effective testing methods.
The Super Bowl is on Sunday, and 51 Patriots are taking on the Fal uh, Falcons, and experts are making predictions across the country, including here on the Sun Coast. Hugh and Buffett are making their picks for a tenth year. They were around, there were around 100 visitors at Mount Marine today to find out who the resident manatees would choose for the fourth year running. It is a tank divided. Buffett chose the Atlanta Falcons to win the Super Bowl, and Hugh chose the New England Patriots, so we have a house divided. We'll have to wait and see which manatee was right. Buffett has predicted the winner correctly eight out of the last nine years. Hugh Wright was right five times, and now for Alan and Bob. I'm picking the Patriots because I was born in Massachusetts, and my kids were <laughs> born there, and Bob, your pick is? I got to tell you, I think it's one for the thumb for the Patriots. Uh, they'll get five, I think. Uh, they uh, coach there, Belichick, it's hard to beat. He's hard to beat in these uh, big games, and we'll see what happens. I hope it's a lot better than the championship games were, though. They, those were uh, kind of uh, duds as far as that goes. That's typically the best football weekend, but turned out to be not so good. So Super Bowl. Hopefully it is a super game. Uh, here's what's happening with our weather. It's been super here. Uh, the sunset and a beautiful sky out there, 62 degrees. And the dew point is 54. Winds out of the north, northwest at 6. The pressure 3019. It's rising slightly again. And it looks uh, very comfortable outside. But temperatures will start to cool pretty rapidly now that the sun has gone down below the horizon. 73 still in Miami at 62 in Pensacola near the coast. Longboat Key at 61, 63, Anna Maria, 65 in Northport. A bit warmer in Arcadia at 68 degrees. Lakewood Rancher at 64 degrees. And Evening Planner looks to be into the mid-50s by 11 o'clock under fair skies. There will be some fog forming. Be a little bit better chance to see that fog, too, I think, tomorrow morning. And it could cause some problems for commuters as it kind of builds in from the southeast and thickens up again a bit just after sunrise. But it'll burn off pretty quickly. And we're looking for an absolutely outstanding day again on Thursday. High temperatures into the mid to upper 70s tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, in the wake of the deadly shooting at Fort Lauderdale International Airport, a state senator has an idea to prevent a similar tragedy, allowing people with concealed carry permits to bring their guns into the terminal. We'll show you why the proposal is garnering controversy when we return. on Suncoast View. We're taking DIY to a new level. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. The Makers Market and Workshops is here to get crafty with us and help us find a passion for home projects. The Venice Theater previews the sounds of the greatest generation with the Andrews Sisters. Plus, can't miss Suncoast events with photographer Cliff Rolls and Food Lovers Catering joins us in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Join ABC7 at the all-new 2017 edition of Circus Sarasota. Synergy under the big top at Nathan Benderson Park. Behind them all at UTC Friday, February 10th through Sunday, March 5th. All opening weekend tickets are 20% off courtesy of ABC7. To purchase your discount tickets, visit circusarts.org, the Circus Sarasota box office at the big top, or call 941-355-9805. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Whether a family member needs a little extra help around the house, assistance recovering from a hospital stay, or someone to check in on them throughout the week, Right at Home's in-home care is the answer. Your loved one deserves the right care. And now we need caregivers to help give the right care for the right reasons, the right way. At Right at Home, we're one of the only private home health agencies in this area with the opportunity to earn paid time off. If you're someone who loves helping people, take a look at our website and click on Jobs to join our team today. 
Come meet the artists and enjoy their creations at the Lido Beach Winter Fine Art Festival. Over 100 artists and thousands of works of contemporary art in photography, glass, sculpture, jewelry, and much more. The Lido Beach Winter Fine Art Festival, Saturday and Sunday, February 4th and 5th on Lido Beach in Sarasota. Bring your sense of discovery and appreciation of the beautiful to the Lido Beach Fine Art Festival. For more information, visit ParagonArtEvents.com. State Senator Greg Stubbe has made quite a name for himself, filing and pushing a host of bills aimed at making it legal for gun owners to bring their weapons just about anywhere. And one of, one of those anywheres are airport terminals. In the aftermath of the Fort Lauderdale shooting, Stubbe's proposal made national news, and ABC 7's Jacqueline Matter has the story. Right now, you're not allowed to bring a weapon into a nightclub, Pulse nightclub, into a University of Florida State, and into an airport. But the, the law saying that you can't bring a firearm there didn't stop criminals or terrorists from walking into a gun-free zone and opening fire. For years, Greg Stubbe has championed legislation allowing concealed carry permit holders to bring their weapons just about anywhere, including airport terminals. In the wake of the Fort Lauderdale airport shootings that killed five and injured six, Stubbe says that time is now. Had there been more guns, he says it could have saved lives. In a situation like that, a minute can be a very long time when somebody's going through rounds in, in a firearm. So denying law-abiding citizens' ability to defend themselves I don't think should be the public policy of Florida. Which is why he's once again pushing his legislation allowing anyone with a permit to openly carry in Florida airports. But for Rick Piccolo, president of Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, guns everywhere in an airport terminal would only hinder law enforcement from doing its job. Open carry uh, presents a lot of issues for us as an airport. I really follow what the officers need and most of the police organizations have come out against open carry uh, in the community, let alone the airport. So we're really trying to take our cue from our police officers. Current state law prohibits guns in airport terminals. However, Stubby's bill would allow weapons inside terminals, but not past security. When it comes to whether or not an open carry holder would have made a difference in that Fort Lauderdale shooting. We'll never know if, if the law had been different. One, had the individual even targeted the airport because he would have known that there was likely other people around that had a gun on them. And two, if, the, if it did occur, w was there somebody there that would have been able to react quickly and put the threat down before he ran out of ammunition? If there was a person with a, a concealed carry permit that started shooting back at the assailant, when the officer walks into the baggage claim area, he's very quickly got to figure out who's the bad guy and who's the good guy. And uh, the Fort Lauderdale incident, I think, is a, a great example of how difficult that would be. Stubby's bill not only legalizes guns in airports, it would also allow permit holders to carry guns on college campuses and in government meetings, as well as carrying openly in public. He says his effort mostly stems around keeping his community safe. I just think that if you've gone through the necessary background checks, you've gone through the necessary chaining, you've fingerprinted, you've done the background checks, you've obtained a license in the state of Florida, you should be permitted to carry in defense of yourself and others. Stubbe says a 2015 report found permit holders committed crimes at a much lower rate than that of police officers. Numbers he says should be acknowledged. So if you're okay with police officers carrying guns, then why would you not have a problem with licensed permit holders carrying a gun when they're 10 times less likely to commit a crime? As for the likelihood of this bill passing, Stubbe finds himself in a good position this year since he now chairs the Senate Judiciary Committee. I'm hopeful that we'll have the opportunity to at least debate these bills this year because in previous years they've been held up in a committee, the committee I now chair, and we didn't even get an opportunity for the senators to have an opportunity to vote. But for some law enforcement officers and airport officials alike, Stubby's bill is not only unnecessary, it could make a tough job for those looking to keep travelers safe. We constantly look at every incident and examine what we're doing because the the field keeps changing and new incidents bring up new issues. Stubbe may now be chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, but the question remains whether Senate leadership will allow his airport gun proposal to come up for a vote in the full Senate. Jacqueline Matter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Coming up, we'll speak to an attorney who does work for the NRA and a former law enforcement officer. In a moment, we'll go to the trapezoid. Attention. 
This is an important message for anyone who has taken Xarelto or Pradaxa. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner medication Xarelto or Pradaxa and was then hospitalized for internal bleeding, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to serious, even fatal internal bleeding. If you suffered a stroke, heart attack, or serious internal bleeding, or if a loved one died after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call us now. Our network of attorneys have years of experience fighting the big pharmaceutical companies and is ready to fight for you. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto or Pradaxa who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Call today for a free confidential consultation. Don't fight this alone. Please call 800-928-6604. That is 800-928-6604. Attention small business owners, Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes, you're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-658-3433. 800-658-3433. Join us for Sarasota Opera's 2017 Winter Festival, opening February 11th. Featuring Puccini's most famous opera, Madame Butterfly, Rossini's delightful comedy, The Italian Girl in Algiers, Poulenc's heartbreaking Dialogues of the Carmelites, in the medieval thriller The Love of Three Kings by Italo Montemezzi. Tickets are on sale now. Call 941-328-1300 or visit sarasotaopera.org. Welcome back. What started as one bill is now six. This afternoon, State Senator Greg Stubbe announced that his bill uh, would open carry bill would now be broken down into six separate bills. Senate Bill 618 was officially filed today. It authorizes those with concealed carry licenses to bring a weapon or a firearm into any part of an airport up to security checkpoints. 1.7 million Floridians have concealed carry permits, but would allowing them to bring firearms into airports make them more safe? And joining us now to talk about this issue is Kurt Lavarello, Executive Director of the School Safety Advocacy Council. And in a moment, we hope to have Ron Chapman, who is an attorney who owner of the Chapman Law Group. He is also uh, represents from time to time the NRA. Kurt, let me start with you. I, I was I wanted to ask this, uh, this question to Ron, and I hope, hopefully we still will. But uh, you heard uh, Rick Piccolo from the uh, airport say that this presents a situation. If guns were allowed in airport terminal, terminals, what happens if there was a shooting and law enforcement officers round the corner and see multiple people with firearms, what are they to do? Is that your concern as well? Well, absolutely, it's the, and it's the concern of a lot of police chiefs and sheriffs across the country, quite frankly. And, you know, Greg Stubbe has proposed what I'm calling the OK Corral bill of all time here, allowing everybody to carry pretty much anywhere they want to. And in an airport, even put aside the law enforcement officers, if you would, for a moment, but just think of every passenger who's now carrying, could be considerably hundreds of them, as they turn the corner, they see somebody else with a gun who might be a law-abiding ca gun carrier, and you create this OK Corral shootout in an airport. That's not the situation you want to have occur. Right. Uh, and I would assume that, uh, that Represent Senator Stubbe would push back in saying that if you have a concealed carry permit, you have training that should hopefully uh, you know, uh, train you how to handle situations like that. Yeah, that's absolutely untrue though. There's no training requirement whatsoever to get it up, uh, carry concealed permit here in Florida. As a matter of fact, 
You don't even have to shoot a gun here in Florida to obtain that permit. They have people that just, they call it demonstrating proficiency, and that's all that's required. Good news, folks. We have Ron Chapman joining us now. Uh, Ron is the owner of the Chapman Law Group, and he also does work for the NRA. Ron, thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, and I know I'm going to be asking the question uh, that you uh, probably heard uh, me ask, Kurt, and that is to respond to something that Rick Piccolo uh, who is the director of the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, uh, the concern that he voiced that he said that if you allowed uh, concealed carry uh, permit holders to have uh, guns in airport terminals and something happens and law enforcement rounds the corner and see multiple people with firearms in a shooting event, how is law enforcement to know who is the good guy and who is the bad guy? Well, that could be a very good question if the events were contemporaneous. The problem is it takes the police five to nine minutes to arrive at a scene. If you would have had the firearms in Fort Lauderdale, that scene would have been over with probably in minutes, and then the police would arrive two, three minutes later. Um, so you wouldn't really have that opportunity or that confusion for the police as to who are the good guys or who are the bad guys. Also, police are used to coming onto scenes where there are multiple people, and they can ascertain very quickly who the good guys and the bad guys are. Um, again, this is a personal safety issue. It's fine to say the police will be there and prevent these, but generally the police aren't there, but, and it takes them five to nine minutes to show up. Ron, but uh, let me ask you this, because the sheriff down in Broward County says that the, his officers did respond very quickly to the, uh, t to the scene, and that... Um, he, when talking about this, this, uh, this open carry bill in airport terminals, he said, the sheriff says that that would have made situations like what happened in, in Fort Lauderdale very, very difficult. Well, we don't really know because we don't have those opportunities, but there are many opportunities where civilians carrying firearms have gotten out and protected police officers when crime scenes were going on. Uh, there was just one report in another state where a police officer, bad guy was on top of him, beating him up, and, you know, passerby pulled over with his firearm and shot the, the bad guy. So these things do happen, but you are creating a scene at Sterl for the person that's carrying a firearm, the bad person. They come into a a pure target shooting area, and that's what you had in Fort Lauderdale. All we're right. saying at that. Ron, we're just going to take a pause right there. We're working on your video as we speak there. We are just getting started with our conversation on guns in airports coming up right after a check on our forecast with Bob, so stay with us. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Matter. And I'm Adam Cellini. Voters, start your engines. The third annual Bradenton Area River Regatta returning to the Sun Coast this week. We'll take a look at the preparations underway and hear from race organizers tomorrow morning. John? Well, we're looking at lots of sunshine and mild weather for the event as well. We'll have details. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you. And for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! <laughs> Two years ago, my son was born. Now he's running, playing, and learning to speak. When I look at him, I can't help but to see how free he is. I want my son to have the same freedom when he grows up. Protect our freedom of speech, not just for us, but for the future generations. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our office and ask for Jackie Avina. From meeting curious lemurs to feeding big cats and hosing down rhinos, there's never a dull moment. And sometimes these amazing animals chime in. Watch Animal Outtakes every week on ABC7.
Come out to the best party of the season, the Goodwill Mardi Gras Gala on February 28th at Michael's on Eat. Tickets at experiencegoodwill.org. Our discussion of guns in airports continues in just a moment, but first let's get a check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Alan, it doesn't get much better than this. Uh, today's temperatures were in the low 70s near the coast, mid 70s inland. Actually, it may get a little bit better than that tomorrow. We are looking at the Van Wazel webcam time lapse from 2 o'clock this afternoon. Some sailboats out there enjoying the beautiful conditions out over the water. And then you see occasionally some high cirrus clouds streaming overhead, but generally mostly sunny skies throughout the day. And a gorgeous sunset it was. Now, Titan radar picture not showing any rainfall around. We have this large dome of high pressure that continues to dominate the weather. It's not moving much either. When this gets in this position right here, we warm up too. We get a little bit more of an easterly to southeasterly wind, and it's not moving. And that means the atmosphere also is going to start heating up each day. Uh, with that easterly wind, we can expect that to continue. Now, today's pollen count, because of that high pressure, is uh, not moving much. The air is not moving as well. So the pollen kind of sticks around and gathers. We're expecting this to be a problem again tomorrow. The forecast is for a 9.9, .9, and it will be major tree pollen, uh, juniper, maple, and oak, uh, the top problems there. Current temperature at Sarasota Braden Airport at 62 degrees now. Clear skies, and the dew point is at 54. Humidity at 75%. We have a north-northwest wind at 6, and the high today again warmed into the low 70s, uh, just above average at 73. 72 is our normal. It was a kind of a cool start. 44 will be into the upper 40s to low 50s over much of the area. We could use a little bit of rain, didn't get any in. We don't expect any for some time. 67 in Orlando, it's 73 now in Miami, so pretty balmy across the peninsula. A little bit cooler right near the coast, uh, near the water, but inland areas at 65 in Arcadia, 66 in Mayaca City and Northport now at 63. Lows tonight will be close to the seasonal averages in the low 50s to uh, mid 50s, upper 40s while inland Mayaca City at 48. Lakewood Ranch at 50 degrees, 55 in Braden and 56 at Longbow Key. Anna Maria, you'll be at 57 to start the morning off. Now, there will be some fog problems tomorrow morning. Be a little bit thicker, too, but it'll only be around for about an hour, and it should burn off rather quickly. So keep that in mind if you have a commute tomorrow morning. The front, well, here it is coming down, but guess what? It runs into that big blue H I showed you off the coast of Florida and doesn't get much of a chance to get through us. It stays to our north and eventually fades away. Well, the lake effect snows are not fading away for Oswego in New York, where they're going to get up to two feet of snow on lake effect snows moving across there. And out west, things are really getting worse. Into California, heavy rains, flood advisories, also heavy snow advisories for the Sierra Nevada range. You can see that all lined up there. They've had the tough winter. And with Groundhog Day tomorrow, uh, we're expecting the groundhog, the famous one, Puxitani Phil, to uh, not see his shadow. That means an early spring. Sea is running one to two feet with a light chop out there. Water temperature at 68 degrees right now. And as far as the seven day forecast goes, calling for great weather, beautiful weather. This is uh, one of those uh, outstanding weeks, uh, mid 70s to upper 70s, right through early next week. Alan will be right back after this. Ciao, amici. It's time for Carnavale de Cani. Top Dog 2017. Benefiting Dante's Den is the Carnival of Dogs. Join us at the Francis for an evening of great food and fun as dogs compete for the title of Best Dress, Best Hair, Best Kiss, and Best Singer. Top Dog is a party for dog lovers and their four-legged best friends. Come celebrate our favorite pets at Top Dog 2017, Saturday, February 4th at 6 p.m. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. Are you paying too much for your cable or satellite TV? The U.S. government passed a bill mandating free over-the-air digital transmission of all broadcast network television channels. That means with the new TV Freeway digital antenna, you can get free HD programming from your favorite broadcast networks 24-7 without a bill. You just plug it into the back of your TV and start watching all of your favorite broadcast programs for free. There are no contracts to sign, no hidden fees, and no monthly fees. Just free HD broadcast TV. Take it with you anywhere. Call or go online now to get your TV freeway stick for the incredibly low price of only $14.99. 
But wait, call or click now and you can get a second TV freeway stick for a second TV. Just pay a separate fee, but you have to order right now. Call 1-800-809-5196 to get your TV freeway. Call now or go to tvfreeway.com. So call 1-800-809-5196. This offer's not in any store. Call now. The official salon of ABC7. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're discussing a proposal by Sarasota State Senator Greg Stubbe to allow concealed carry of handguns, handguns in airport passenger terminals. Our guests tonight are Kurt Lavarello of the School Safety Advocacy Council and Attorney Ron Chapman, who does work for the NRA. Uh, and Ron, I'm, I'm going to give uh, Kurt a chance to uh, respond to something you were saying, and then I want you to go back at it. You, you heard that what Ron was saying, that uh, his take of the Fort Lauderdale shooting was that um, that it happened so quickly that uh, law enforcement did not respond to it uh, and there were not enough police officers there to fast enough for them to do the job on their own. Well, you know, the, the thing with Fort Lauderdale International Airport is they have a very well-trained law enforcement group of people there with the sheriff's office. That's where I used to work in my law enforcement career. And there are over 120 officers just dedicated to that airport. And actually the incident was resolved within 30 to 35 seconds of it occurring. And those officers do more than just respond to eliminate the threat, but they're also looking for other threats, which the average citizen who would have a gun would not be doing. They're not assessing the situation for what further could happen. Those officers did. So, Ron, when we say we don't know what would have happened if uh, there were civilians there with firearms, you know, it looks like the law enforcement did react as quickly as one could have hoped. So, therefore, wouldn't it make it more chaotic if law enforcement was confronted with a number of different people with firearms? Well, I'd like to look at three scenarios. The first one is I don't know how fast they responded and whether they've done the great job that they could do, and I'm not disputing that the sheriff department did a great job. But equipping citizens with firearms and allowing to be in, to be in there is for protection of lives, for the protect, you know, for the for the prevention of crimes and. To cite the statistics that say that there would have been chaos or the individual with the gun, the, the person with the carry would have been causing the problem, no one can cite to real cases throughout this country where a person with a concealed weapon permit has actually caused a problem been confused by the police officer. So why not let a person in there for personal protection and let's see if in some of these crimes. Well, let, let's, let's take that question to, to Kurt here, and, and I'll tell both of you gentlemen, I spent some time this afternoon trying to look for statistical evidence one way or the other, and part of the problem in doing so is I, I found a lot of anecdotal stories but not a lot of statistics, and is, Kurt, is that part of the problem? Yeah, that is part of the problem, quite honestly. Um, and likewise, to, to Ron's comments, there, there is absolutely no evidence to suggest that the more guns we bring into schools or airports or any of these places that Greg Stubbe's proposing are going to make it safe. As a matter of fact, just in the school argument alone, we've actually seen the opposite in some of the schools across the country with a lot of accidental shootings um, among teachers and things like that. So there's a lot of good of this anecdotal and news report stories that that is not an effective method. But again, you take the situation there in Fort Lauderdale Airport, and the, yeah, the officer is going to have to turn the corner and maybe confront five people with guns. But what about all the other people carrying the guns? Who, who, how do they make a determination who to protect lives from? They could wind up shooting who would be a good armed person in the airport. And it, it really does, which is why I've called it the OK Corral bill, because that's what it's leading towards, it's going to create the OK Corral. Well, Ron, respond to that. What happens if you have a situation like that and someone who has a concealed carry uh, permit and fires in response to a shooting like that shoots the wrong person? Well, that could happen, but we haven't had statistics to say that that's been happening. And we have, what, one million some individuals in Florida that carry concealed weapons. So this OK Corral shoot em up episode really hasn't occurred. But one statistic I can give you is every seven seconds in this country, an innocent person is shot with a gun. That what the NRA's position is, and with 
what Senator Scooby wants to do is let's equip citizens to prevent some of that. So when the bad guy shows up with a gun, they may be confronted with a good guy, so to speak, with well, a gun to prevent. Can either one of you explain to me why we're just dealing with mostly anecdotal information here? Why hasn't our government, uh, state, federal, or local, done some kind of research to separate some fact and, and from That's, fiction here? That is an absolute great question, and I've lobbied up in, in Washington, D.C. for school stats of the same kind. We still don't even know how many school shootings we actually have around the country. So it's not only a great question, it's something we should be doing, and hopefully things will change. John, when it comes to lobbying and influence in Washington, uh, it doesn't get any bigger or better than the NRA. Why don't we have uh, statistical facts that we could we could look at. So we're not just talking about anecdotal information and maybe and maybe not. Well, I think it's a real good question. I don't know the answer to that. You know, there are all kinds of stats on how many people own guns, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes right down to it on this issue, you're right. It's just anecdotal and people argue from emotion. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a new sheriff in town in Washington. Why don't we, why don't we ask the Trump administration to conduct a uh, some some research so we know what we're talking about and not just hoping for the best that more people with guns in, in places like airports will have uh, put down a, a mass shooter when when we really don't know if that is true or not well i agree with that but one thing i also agree with is taking away guns from citizens that have a second amendment right does not reduce crime there is no evidence that, look at Chicago, it has some of the stiffest, the stiffest, strongest gun control measures, and what did they have last year? More shootings than any other city in this country? Um, well, so, well, in retrospect, you could also look at other countries that have, you know, strict gun enforcement and have far fewer gun fatalities and shootings than we do, so it works both ways in the statistic department. Right. Well, and, I'm and not I concerned about the United States, and in the United States, the city with the strongest gun control had the highest gun rate when it came, or the shooting rate and death rate when it came to guns. Right, but, but we're, That's we're, not we're, very good statistic. We're, we're changing subjects just a little bit, and we, we could do shows uh, and nauseam about uh, you know gun issues in, in the United States. It is my understanding that uh, Chicago passed a lot of uh, gun control legislation, but the NRA fought some of it and watered it down. But that may be a show uh, in terms of inner city gun violence uh, for another night. Let's, let's stick to our situation, especially in the aftermath of the Fort Lauderdale Airport. And the question uh, becomes, where do we go from here? Uh, Ron, you, you know that uh, one of the big obstacles in last year's session was the Republican who was the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee opposed Greg Stubbe's bill. Now Greg Stubbe is the chairman of that very committee, but does that automatically mean that this legislation is going to pass? I don't think so. I don't know if there is the, the stomach in the legislature or in the, the state as a whole to pass such wide sweeping legislation like Senate Bill 140. Now I know that they've knocked it down into six different bills, so there might be some hope. I think probably airports would be the last place that we probably want to want, want guns, um, but it has a chance. Right. And, and uh, Kurt, let me ask you, you quickly, do you suspect that the, the, this bill was separated into six parts because there was concern that some parts of this are more likely to pass than others? Yeah, I think you probably know that Greg Stubbe's probably already identified people in over on the, the House side and, and the Senate side that may be opposed to certain specific areas. So that's why it's being divided up. I, I know there's already a, a sponsor for the airport bill over on the House side. So I'm sure he's looking at some easier paths. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about the uh, Supreme Court nominee of Donald Trump. We'll stay with us. Top Dog 2017, benefiting Dante's Den, is the carnival of dogs. Join us at the Francis for an evening of great food and fun as dogs compete for the title of Top Dog. Grab your pooch and head out to Top Dog Saturday, February 4th at 6 p.m. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Attention blood clot filter patients. Surgically implanted blood clot filters are potentially life-threatening. Some filters are prone to breaking, resulting in pieces of the filter moving through the body and causing internal bleeding. 
If you had surgery to implant a blood clot filter, you may be entitled to a cash award, even if you haven't suffered side effects yet. Call the Gold Shield Group now, 888-747-5291, to see if you qualify for a cash award, 888-747-5291. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Come meet the artists and enjoy their creations at the Lido Beach Winter Fine Art Festival. Over 100 artists and thousands of works of contemporary art in photography, glass, sculpture, jewelry, and much more. The Lido Beach Winter Fine Art Festival, Saturday and Sunday, February 4th and 5th on Lido Beach in Sarasota. Bring your sense of discovery and appreciation of the beautiful to the Lido Beach Fine Art Festival. For more information, visit paragonartevents.com. Welcome back. Could allowing the concealed carry in airports keep kelp Keep people safe. Our just jo guests join us now for final thoughts. And Ron, I'm going to start with you. I wish we could see your smiling face here. But what is the one thing that you want our guests to take away from this conversation tonight? Well, I think the first thing to take away is I understand that this would be a very difficult process allowing firearms into the passenger terminals. But this is a personal safety issue. And I think the more that we allow citizens with concealed carry permits to carry their firearms for personal safety, the more violence we can prevent. There are every seven seconds, an innocent person is being killed. So I think we need these individuals to start preventing that crime. Uh, another option could simply be to push back the, the clean zone to not allow people in the airport at all with any kind of firearms, but that just creates more of a problem. So I think what we would say here is allowing firearms is a personal safety protection issue, and we should allow individuals carrying firearms and who knows they might have prevented this incident and they might prevent others uh, Kurt, it, it sounds from what ron is saying to us tonight that even the nra does not expect that this there's a real good chance that this would become law this year it's it's possible it's hard to tell this early out but uh you know, I think it's one of those things where, you know, when you sit back and you look at the totality of, of the events that occurred in Fort Lauderdale and, and elsewhere across our country, uh, we have dedicated officers that work those airports for a reason. They're well trained to not only respond to shootings, but to look for pending incidents occurring. Uh, people have to know that when you have a concealed firearm permit. Let me sorry, if they're looking yeah. for uh, incidents that could occur, I mean, obviously they did not catch this guy. No, then those incidents are going to continue to happen, you know, around the country. It's, it's making that response time tighter, and, and they did a good job there, as I said. But again, I think it's important to know that when you have a concealed permit in the state of Florida, you're not trained to really do anything other than carry the gun. All right, we have to leave it there. But before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about President Trump's nominee for the U.S. Supreme Court. Last night, just after our broadcast, the president announced that Neil Gorsuch, a federal appellate judge from Colorado, will be his choice. The 49-year-old went to Oxford, Columbia, and Harvard. He has been criticized for his rulings in favor of business interests like the Hobby Lobby birth control decision. Here is what some of our viewers are saying about the pick. Kristen Copson writes, this is a good pick for conservatives, similar to Scalia, has a consistent track record. Joan Miss Musimichi, a career, writes, keep in mind a Supreme Court justice is supposed to be nonpartisan, not the puppet of Trump. And Kathy Hart writes, I would encourage everyone to look at his stance on issues we're facing on the national level. Not sure this is the right guy for the job. I agree both conservative and liberal views are needed for a balanced court. However, there is a fine line between justice and intolerance. 
Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, want to watch past roundtable discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Kurt Lavarello is executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council, and Ron Chapman is a Sarasota attorney and the owner of the Chapman Law Group. He also works for clients like the NRA. When we return, we'll speak to ABC News legal analysts about President Trump's Supreme Court nominee today, and plus Uber drivers are out of luck. A Florida court is ruling in favor of the company. Find out what it means for nearly 20,000 drivers in the state. The details in our primetime headlines. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Our goal is to do things better than anybody in the country. What makes Sarasota Memorial Hospital's program so special is that it's taking care of the patient in every aspect of cardiovascular disease. And in this community, the, the patients are very active. The idea is not just to get them over that operation, but to get them back to doing the things that they enjoy doing. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe and they just helped every step of the way and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service and you can trust them to help you. Call right now to get your free senior care compass ebook. Find out about the five best kept secrets on financing senior care and assisted living. Call now 800-290-0352. 800-290-0352. Welcome back. Last night, President Donald Trump announced Neil Gorsuch as his nominee for the U.S. Supreme Court. Gorsuch would fill the seat held by the late Antonin Scalia, who died unexpectedly nearly a year ago. Joining us for more on Gorsuch is ABC News legal analyst Kate Shaw. Uh, Kate, thanks for joining us. And I'm wondering, last night the conversation Hi. was whether Democrats are going to go all the way to try to block this nomination or save their firepower for the next nominee, which would change the balance of the Supreme Court. Uh, what are you hearing today? You know, I think it's very much an open question. I think under ordinary circumstances, a nominee like Judge Gorsuch, you would see sailing through, probably with some Democratic support. Uh, but I think given the context, uh, which is that President Obama made a nomination to, to fill this vacancy, someone viewed as a pretty moderate, uh, you know, widely respected and liked consensus pick, Judge Merrick Garland, uh, and then he never even got a hearing, uh, I think a lot of Senate Democrats feel that this seat is, was fundamentally stolen. It was for President Obama to fill. Uh, so in some ways, it's not really about Judge Gorsuch. Uh, that said, when he starts making the rounds, uh, and my sense is he is uh, a very likable, you saw this last night even in his remarks, he's humble, he's self-deprecating, uh, he's clearly brilliant. Uh, it may be difficult for the Democrats, I think, to kind of maintain the resolve to block him at all costs. So I think it's quite possible that you'll see a decision made to allow him to go through uh, and then to save the fight, as you say, for a potential next vacancy, which really could change the balance on the court. Already today, people are picking through his writings, not only only his opinions, but also writings going back to his days at Columbia University where he uh, made fun of some people protesting the, the Sandinistas and uh, so forth. Are Democrats going to go back to his college writings and try to raise that as an issue that may have an impact on today's argument? 
Look, I mean, I think that, that anything that these that, that these nominees have written is is likely to be scrutinized. I mean, you saw with Justice Kagan and Justice Sotomayor, uh, many sort of early, early writings and activities by Justice Sotomayor became confirmation issues. So yeah, I, I think it's quite possible. Uh, and look, Judge Gorsuch was, was a conservative student and has been a sort of strong conservative throughout. Um, uh, his, he, you know, his, his mother was a Reagan uh, cabinet member. Um, and so, you know, he, he has been kind of exposed to politics and I think active in politics. Obviously, he's now a judge. Um, but so there will be, I think there will be probably lots of things that are, are pulled out and um, potentially become confirmation issues. I haven't seen anything yet that, that is likely to become wildly controversial, but it's certainly possible. Finally, if you could explain to our viewers what is at stake with this particular nomination at this time when there are a lot of people here on both sides of, let's say, the abortion issue, this decision itself yeah. is not going to sway the court one way or the other, is it not? That, that's that's absolutely right. So you've had for years now basically a 5-4 divide on the court. Um, so you have four pretty strong conservative justices, four strong liberals, and then Justice Anthony Kennedy, who really is the swing vote uh, on many, many issues. Uh, so with Justice Scalia's unexpected death, you all of a sudden had a different balance, four liberals and only three conservatives. So if Judge Gorsuch uh, were confirmed, it would essentially restore the balance on the court that existed before Justice Scalia's death. Uh, so that would mean, very likely, you would still have a five-justice majority to say affirm, reaffirm the right uh, uh, announced in Roe versus Wade uh, to an abortion. Um, so things like the, the, the constitutionality um, uh, of abortion restrictions uh, are likely not going to be, you know, in question, even if he is confirmed. Uh, same thing with some of the important gay rights decisions that you've seen in recent years. Um, you would still have a strong uh, five-justice majority for things like a constitutional right to marry, regardless of sex. Um, the real question would be if there was another vacancy and if it was someone on the other side. Uh, then all of a sudden there's a possibility of, of flipping the 5-4 balance, and then potentially those kinds of precedents would very much be in question. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. Kate Shaw is legal analyst for ABC News. You're Primetime headlines are coming up after this break. News. We're here for you. Watch My Suncoast News wherever you are. On our live stream, on our newly redesigned MySuncoast.com, and a brand new ABC7 My Suncoast app. Powered by the Eye Associates, providing sight for life. Featuring traffic maps and live radar, and dining with recipes and all the hottest Suncoast restaurants. Visit MySuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab to download the ABC7 My Suncoast app for iOS and Android. Attention blood clot filter patients. Surgically implanted blood clot filters are potentially life-threatening. Some filters are prone to breaking, resulting in pieces of the filter moving through the body and causing internal bleeding. If you had surgery to implant a blood clot filter, you may be entitled to a cash award, even if you haven't suffered side effects yet. Call the Gold Shield Group now, 888-747-5291, to see if you qualify for a cash award, 888-747-5291. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Welcome back to Primetime Headlines. President Trump is calling his new Supreme Court nominee an almost perfect man. 
Democrats have a little bit of a different view. Neil Gorsuch made the rounds today on Capitol Hill, meeting with senators who will consider his nomination, starting with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. President Trump is calling on McConnell to use the so-called nuclear option if Democrats tried to hold up his nomination. If we end up with that gridlock, I would say, if you can, Mitch, go nuclear, because that would be an absolute uh, shame if a man of this quality was caught up in the web. Confirmation hearings for Gorsuch are tentatively scheduled to begin in six weeks. The Senate is approving former ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson as the Secretary of State. Republicans unanimously supported him, while the majority of Democrats voted against him. The 64-year-old Texan had a shaky confirmation hearing last month with questions concerning Tillerson's approach to Russia and state sponsors of terror such as Iran. The United Nations has a new Secretary General, and in his first speech, Antonio Gutierrez took aim at President Trump's immigration ban. Last week, Trump banned immigration from seven predominantly Muslim nations, including all refugees from Syria. Gutierrez says the measure needs to be removed. This is not the way to best protect uh, uh, the U.S. or any other country uh, in relation to the uh, serious concerns that exist about possibilities of terrorist infiltration, but I don't think this is the effective way to do so. This week, the administration authorized the entrance of nearly 900 refugees who had already been vetted. In Jupiter, a golf course owned by President Trump is losing a major lawsuit. Today, a federal judge is ruling the Trump National Golf Club must pay former members $5.7 million. The decision is the result of a class action lawsuit by 65 members who lost access to the club when Trump took over. Trump refused to refund millions in dues, a breach of contract. President Trump and the Trump Organization had no comment. Uber drivers in Florida are technically contractors and not eligible for unemployment benefits. That's according to a rule from an appeals court just today. The decision stems from a 2015 claim by a man who spent five months as an Uber driver before the company dropped him. Today's ruling represents the latest in the string of victories for Uber here in Florida. It affects approximately 20,000 people who drive for the company. The decision comes as legislators are considering a bill to create statewide regulations for insurance and background checks for companies like Uber and Lyft. New developments tonight involving the widow of the Orlando nightclub shooter, Nora Salmon, will remain in jail until her trial on charges of aiding her husband's terror activities. A judge today said he would reconsider her request for release after she undergoes a mental evaluation. Salmon is pleading not guilty to supporting her husband, Omar Martin, in the June 12th attack. Martin killed 49 people and injured 53 others. He was shot and killed by police. And that is all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.